Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. State Representative Amy Loudenbeck of Clinton is a Republican seeking re-election in the 31st Assembly District. Amy, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Thanks for having me. Okay, if you're re-elected, your top priority, your top issue next session, please. Safe and healthy communities, balancing the budget, and making sure that opportunities are there for Wisconsin workers to reposition themselves in this recovering economy. And uh, let's talk about balancing the budget. If we're, I'm making up a number, if the pandemic causes us to be a billion short in tax collections in the current fiscal year. What do you think the options are? I think the options are to look at what the governor puts out as far as his directive to maintain spending at current levels or look for ways to reduce that. And we know we do have a rainy day fund if we need to position ourselves for a two year, um, a two year drop off. I think that that's reasonable to look at, look at that. But I definitely think we need to look at efficiencies at all levels of government so that we don't have to cut the aid to schools and the programs that we support. But if we can make ourselves more efficient within the bureaucracy, that would be a great place to start. Let's and no, up. I'm not in favor of raising taxes. Okay, no no revenue uppers, right? Yes. Okay, a, a pandemic question. The governor has a decision on September 28th to uh, extend the statewide mask edict or let it lapse. What's your recommendation to the governor? My recommendation to the governor is that yep. he it, he um, he allows the health emergency public health emergency to lapse. Okay, no longer needed beyond that. Right. Okay. I don't think th we've seen the results. We don't know what success looks like. We've given him an opportunity to to put his ideas out there, and I don't think that there's sufficient buy-in right now that that what what we're doing now is is effective. Okay. Um, you remember joint finance, you, you done, dealt with the health services budget, the Medicaid budget. Question about hospitals, which are playing a key role in treating COVID-19 patients. Do you think in the next budget, if you're reelected, they, they need an even greater priority than they may have in the current budget? Well, they have a great priority in our current budget, and I have supported additional DISH funding. You know what that is, Steve, that disproportionate share funding, and I have facilities in communities that I represent that benefit from that. I feel like uh, facilities that serve particularly Medicaid populations need to make up for the money that they're that they're losing every time they provide care, and hopefully get, getting that disproportionate share payment um, Maintaining it where it is is going to be obviously um, a challenge, but a priority in the in the new uh, in the new budget. But I also think it's fair to say we should look at other kinds of healthcare providers, including our emergency medical services providers, because they're in the same position too. But I do think that that keeping healthcare robust and recognizing that they're they're in a tough spot is is definitely an important consideration. Senator Kappinger's bill, he just, he just dropped it. He said, uh, introduced it. He's, uh, his bill, if, if your business or organization follows COVID-19 protocols to protect customers, patients, or employers, you could not be sued for COVID. Do we need that law? So let me first say that I don't think we need to, um, that we should be protecting bad actors, but I do think that the spirit of the legislation being proposed is to protect not just businesses, but schools and county fairs and, and other nonprofits and homeowners from fr frivolous lawsuits. And so for that reason, I would be supportive of the bill after taking a serious look at it and making sure that, 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 that my understanding of the spirit of the bill is exactly what the language says. Neighboring Illinois just legalized recreational marijuana. Um, has that changed your position? What's your position on both medical and recreational? I have 
not been in favor of recreational marijuana. However, just this past session, I did sign on to Representative Falskowski's uh, medical marijuana bill because I do believe that's something that we need to have a have a debate on. And I think she, in good faith, put together a bill that doesn't that that's very limited. It's limited to a patch. It's limited to. Um, people with medical conditions, and it's also um, not a tax, not a revenue generator for the state. It's treated like 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 other prescription drugs and not taxed. I don't think we need to look at that as this panacea of, of, of new revenue like other states have, including Illinois to the uh, to the south of where I am right now. And um, I'm hoping that we can have that discussion. I've supported the CBD oil bill in the past, and. Um, you know, from a policy standpoint, it's not necessarily about, you know, about what I think all the time, but, um, but I do know people that are, that are really, you know, dealing with the terminal illness or having negative reactions to pharmaceuticals. There, th those people ha should have the opportunity to come make the case to the legislature and at least get that bill of hearing. Governor Evers, Governor Evers says a fair uh, People's Maps Commission should draw the next set of congressional and legislative district lines and then forward them to the legislature to be enacted. Um, the Constitution says party in power. What's your position on redistricting? I support the constitutional process that we currently have in place. I would um, I would remark that really nonpartisan is it is a nice ideal, but in reality, even the people that Governor Evers chose to be on his not a partisan nonpartisan commission, I think three or four of them have donated to Republican and Democrat candidates in the past. So it's it's really difficult to to say nonpartisan and actually find people that can take off their bias. The nation and Wisconsin and Kenosha has been a, a part of the policing reform debate. Uh, Senator Wangard has eight bills. The governor has nine bills. The speaker is going to form a task force. The Professional Police Association has its own proposals. What, if any, policing reforms do you think are, are needed? I'm excited to see the task force starting to come together. I think that including stakeholders and, and as well as legislators on the task force is important. I know that there's some frustration out there. Oh, it's another task force. But the speaker's task forces actually have a good track record of providing recommendations that are supported by bipartisan groups and by stakeholders. And as far as what measures I would support, I have actually, I've actually, I did do a conference call. The governor requested to speak with me within the last few months. And we talked a little bit about the, the nine bill package. I gave him some ideas that I have that were not in those packages. One of them was an affirmative decertification process, not just to take, to take law enforcement officers that don't meet the standards and training off of the, off of the certification to actually have an active and robust mechanism for, for review and decertification, similar, um, a little bit more robust than what uh, the Representative Ott bill was a few t terms ago that I voted for. I think that's definitely key. Um, and I think looking at mandatory reporting um, amongst the ranks of law enforcement is something that was brought up to me by, um, by a black pastor and social worker in my community. I passed that idea along. I think that there's more than just those nine bills that we should look at. And I think that those nine bills, a lot of, um, a lot of the discussion is really going to go back to local control. So usually people like local control and a lot of local departments do things well and do things right. Um, and they don't want to be told by the state what to do. But if, if the desire is to spell out some things that are already common practice in law so that we can guarantee uniformity, I'm okay with that as well. I just think we need to look, look at, you know, what's the problem we're trying to solve and look at the policies and not just pass something to make people feel better and think that we've solved the problem when it's, it's really quite, um, quite a larger discussion than just gaveling in and voting yes. That's, that's not the process that I think is the best. Is there any one policing reform change you, you you are willing to endorse right now? I would support the, the idea that I have about the affirmative decertification. Okay. I would support. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, going back to your membership of joint finance, the um, property taxes are high in Wisconsin, which is why local governments have been dealing with caps and levy limits for more than 20 years. Um, should those caps and levy limits stay in place to control property taxes? 
I think we've done a really good job of holding the line on property taxes and it's made a difference. When I go out and I talk to, you know, whether it's senior citizens or first time home buyers, I mean, people, people know how much their, their property taxes are and, 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 and it's a big chunk of, chunk of money, um, whether you're paying it monthly or whether you're paying it at the end of the year. To answer your question on the limits, I do, I want to recognize what you're saying. We are a high property tax state. I would rather have us take a look at, um, well, actually, I know what the next question you're going to ask me is, so I'm sort of anticipating that you're going to talk about other tools for local government. So right yeah, now, options. see yeah, the tw- options. Sure. see the caps, um, see the caps remain outside of a referendum, which I do support that opportunity for community ideas to be voted on locally. Um, but as far as tools for local government so that they don't have to rely so much on property taxes, I would be looking, I would be willing to look at some sort of a rebalancing. I've got some considerable inequities in shared revenue distribution for the communities that I represent. That formula is old. That formula picks winners and losers and perhaps as a trade off of some sort of rebalancing so that um, right now they rely a lot on state shared, state shared revenue for their, for their operating as well. And if we're going to continue to do that, we need to have a formula or some sort of a, a, a look back at that formula. And if there's a willingness to to rely less on state funding and more on like local funding, if we could again kind of recalibrate that formula and and in exchange for some tools, I'd be open to that. Uh, Representative Goyke's bill that would let uh, after passage of a referendum, Milwaukee levy a half cent sales tax. Do you have, do you have a position on that bill? I think that if, if that bill were to go through, I think we need to have some certainty on what is going to happen with their unfunded pension liability so that we solve that problem at the same time. And again, Milwaukee gets a significant amount of state shared revenue. Are they going to be willing to to say anything over and above this amount of dollars, we're going to let our shared revenue start going down so that we can start, um, start not just fighting over that that one money every year so um if they were if they were willing to maybe taper down their shared revenue distribution that might be something worth considering because again our sales tax is relatively low and and we've all had this discussion but if we want to keep our income taxes down and we want to keep our property taxes down sales tax is one way that we can that we can again rebalance or recalibrate that mix of revenues um without raising the overall tax burden on Wisconsin residents. Governor Evers, as you know, recommended a gas tax increase last year or, uh, to stabilize how we pay for highways and bridges. Could you support a gas tax in the next budget, a gas tax in- increase in upper? After 10 years of having this discussion and the nearly successful completion of the Illinois uh, you're smiling. The Illinois corridor uh, from the state line to Madison, which um, I mean, I have always said all of the above, everything's on the table, whatever it takes to get it done. This is a giant priority. But after 10 years of spending a lot of a lot of time looking at the gas tax and doing a lot of my own policy research, I really think we need to look at some sort of a user fee that's not just based on that, that doesn't just pick winners and losers based on what the mileage of your vehicle is. One caveat I would say is I would be open to a, di- a diesel differential um, to account for sort for sort of heavy trucks and mileage. But in the greater, in the grand scheme of things, I, I wouldn't be surprised if over the next decade we see the federal government implementing something like a VMT. And if we piggyback on that, you know, that's okay, but I don't want us to be an island of trying to to create our own whole system. But we've seen with Illinois, they've added the tolls, they've doubled and tripled and quadrupled the tolls, and they still don't have great roads. So let's, let's continue with some of the reforms that we've had. I supported the last budget, which definitely added some revenue. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be enough, but I think that the gas tax is just, that debate is has kind of been been had over and over again, and and I, I just don't see it as a reality. So I wouldn't really go to you know go to great lengths to support it. That's for sure. If schools and local governments plan a major public works project, should they have to give a preference to Wisconsin businesses? So I live in a state line area. Um, I know a lot of people that live and work on both sides of the state line, um, including those in the trade. So I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to again create an island of um, of Wisconsin only providing services in Wisconsin, Wisconsin businesses. But 
I would be open to some sort of a, if there's like a preferential or we can give a little bonus points to local firms, knowing that, I mean, at the end of the day, we want to be able to spend our tax dollars and get them to go as far as they can. But if our tax dollars are supporting to going to support local workers, we're going to end up with, with additional income tax and, and other uh, revenues to the state for that. So again, I, I think that, that all other things being equal, we could, we could give a little bump to the locals. To Finally, the state. Different differences between you and your opponent on November 3, please? Well, I have a great track record of results and of listening and of really drilling into the details and coming up with solutions. I'm still relatively um, relatively new where I don't feel like I've, I've done everything I need to do and I'm just here because I know more than everyone. I'm here because I get things done and I don't see my opponent coming up with really any ideas. I don't see her coming out with um, with a plan to take a problem, isolate that problem, drill into the details of that problem and take a bill and get it passed. I had eight bills go through to the governor's desk already this session and a few more would have passed if the Senate would have come back and met after COVID. So for the people that I represent, I think that's a great track record and there's always unfinished business. And so that for that reason, I'd like to return to Madison and continue the work that I'm doing. State Representative Amy Loudenbeck of Clinton is a Republican seeking re-election in the 31st Assembly District. The election is November 3. Amy, thank you for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thanks, Steve. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay safe. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association. Quick Trip. Wisconsin Counties Association. Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.